Hello Blockineers, we are at the Ellison Hotel and we're going to show you the fun things you can do in Oklahoma City. Our first stop is the Oklahoma City National Memorial and Museum. Over here is the timeline of the day of the attack. The building that was bombed was the Alfred P. Murrah building. We're going to listen to the Water Resources Board hearing. And this happened at 9 a.m., which is one minute before the attack. With regard to this proceeding, basically, there are four elements that I have to uh, uh, receive information regarding. <laughs> Whoa! Wow. This is the remnant of the Alfred P. Mira building. Most of the letters weren't even recovered. So the building that was bombed was a federal building, which means many government workers were there. This sign tells you about the minute of the bombing, which was 9.02 a.m. And the bomb killed 168 people and injured 700. The bomb not only affected the Mira building, but it also damaged 25 other structures. And, and 312 buildings had shattered glass, which means the force must have been huge. Here's a graphic of the part of the building that was destroyed, so it was pretty much half of it. The explosion was so devastating that it created a crater. And this shows that the explosive device was in a truck. I thought it would be in the building, but it's actually in the truck. Right now we're on 6th Street between Harvey and Robinson. So we would be over here and the Mira building was there. That's the truck that had a bomb in it. At first they thought that this was just a gas explosion, but then they realized it was a terrorist attack, and then they thought it might have been an attack from a Middle Eastern, but then they realized it was domestic terrorism. The VIN number of the axle of the truck that held the bomb was used to lead investigators to Kansas and the Dream Man Motel where Timothy McVeigh, the bomber, was staying. When they captured the culprit, this was the shirt that he was wearing, and it means thus always to tyrants which was the same phrase yelled by John Wilkes Booth, who assassinated Lincoln. This gallery honors the victims of the attack. This is Timothy McVeigh's car, and they pulled him over because of a missing license plate, and they found a concealed gun, so that's why they arrested him. Timothy McVeigh was executed in June 2001. His accomplice Nichols was spared, and he received 161 consecutive life sentences. The pool over there represents 5th Street, and where the trees and the chairs are is where the federal building was. Each chair represents a lost life, and they're in rows. So the first row is everyone who died on the first floor, second row is for the second floor, and so on. The gates over there say 901, and the one there is 903. So that's the last innocent minute and the first minute of healing because the bombing was at 902. This is the surviving elm tree and it now symbolizes that good triumphs over evil. We're now on ground zero where the bomb exploded the building. And that is the Oklahoma City National Memorial and Museum. This museum was very interesting. I learned quite a lot about the bombing here. This museum is important to visit to learn about the domestic terrorism that happened. Now we are at the Myriad Botanical Gardens. It's so humid in here. Let's walk across the sky bridge. 
Look how high we are. It's smelly. That is a strong level. Oh, that one's the best. Okay, what animal makes that sound? Cricket. Ah, you got it wrong. That was number two. <laughs> Here we can touch and look at four things. First, this is a velvety wooly texture. Okay. This is the cactus. Brother, make music with it. Like the one time in Arizona when you were doing this with a real cactus and got a splinter. Oh, so this is what humans see and this is what bees see. This is the prickly pear cactus and unlike the one back there, we cannot touch this one because it will spike us. That's a cholla right there. A teddy bear cholla. I think the scientists wanted to trick people into hugging it. Oh, Medusa's head. This is Medusa's hair. I don't call it a head because there's no face. I'm gonna try smelling this corpse plant. I'll smell this. This is the sweet floral scent of Ylang no, Ylang. No, I'm smelling. Oh, it smells so much better. Mm. That does smell good. These berries look like Nightlock from the Hunger Games. You can actually see one growing from the tree there. Look, it's a mango, my favorite. Did you know that mangoes are related to the poison ivy family? That's why they taste bad. It is not related to that. It is. It says. Oh, okay. But it still tastes good. You should try it. He, he Seeing always- Seeing is believing. He, he always chickens out of things, just like the corpse plant. Lastly, we're going to check out the Tulip Mania, which is an art exhibit. And that is the Myriad Botanical Garden. My favorite part was smelling all the different plants, even though the corpse plant didn't smell that good. I liked the walkway that was way high up, because you could look down on the entire garden and there were interactive exhibits up there. Now we're visiting the Oklahoma City Museum of Art. First, I'm picking up a discovery pack and then we're checking out Chili Then and Now. This is one of the first artwork we see, seal pups. I thought it looked like birds. Brother thought it looked like... Oh, I was gonna say, they remind me of eggplants. Eggplants? But it also looks like someone tried inflating a balloon and then kind of gave up in the middle. The huge, tall glass structure that goes all the way up, that, the building was constructed specifically for that. It looks like Medusa's hair. Here's some of his early artwork. He was inspired by the Native Americans and made baskets. In fact, the gallery is in chronological order of his career. Ooh, is that Medusa? Medusa. Yeah. The cool thing about these ones is that he had to plan the animals out very carefully. Like the snakes over there, he could kind of bend it. However, if there's an imperfection in the snakes, that's fine. But these have to be so precise. This one's called macchia, which is an Italian term for spotted. I especially like the vases that have color contrast, like the orange is the opposite of blue. That one has red and green, and the, the tip of the vase has an outline. Like This one has yellow on the edge. The log has porcupine spikes. I think the boat in this one might have been inspired by the boats in Venice. Chihuly also makes works on paper in addition to his glass. This is how he gets ideas for some of his glass works. Whoa, the white on the black. That's, That's amazing. This is three layers of glass that combined make one flower. Look, his signature. But they all look like elves. That is the Chihuly Then and Now exhibit. My favorite art piece was the glass ceiling because there are so many colors. And I like the Machia one with all those pots that had different colors all over it, different outlines. 
and it had pretty much every color you could think of. The next gallery is Fighters for Freedom. This is John Brown, Frederick Douglass, and Abraham Lincoln. He's missing his top hat. The next gallery is Art and Activism. Picasso, the best artist ever. Let's check out what's in this stuff. There's a mirror, a book, a microscope, 1,000 calories. Let's sketch this pop little Picasso piece. Over here I did like a five minute sketch and it turned out pretty good. The next gallery is Kiaros Dami Beyond the Frame. There will be 20 life-sized photographs. They were shot in Iran, Italy, France, and Morocco. This one looks very 3D, but it's 2D. I can't believe all these tours are real. Just look at it. This one looks like the entrance to some evil shack. I would like to be this artist and just go traveling around looking for cool doors to photograph. Why are there people sleeping? No, don't step on them, that's rude. This section is cool because it's visitors looking at artwork in the Louvre in Paris. So like in this one, the woman by Da Vinci is looking at the guests. Now I'm gonna take a picture of brother taking a picture of the lady taking a picture of the paint. And that is the Oklahoma City Museum of Art. My favorite art piece was, of course, the chili because it looks super cool that you can see his progress many years back and then right now. In addition to the Chihuly, which obviously was the coolest part, I also enjoyed seeing the pictures of people taking pictures of the paintings at the Louvre. That's a concept that I've never seen at art museums before. Our next stop is the Henry Overholzer Mansion. This house was built in 1903 for $38,000, which is about two million in today's money. Everything in this house is original. And this was probably her wedding china, which the pattern is also painted on the ceiling. This is probably Mrs. Overholster's wedding china. And the same pattern is painted on the ceiling. These are the dinner chimes, so they can signal for guests to come over. That's much more polite than shouting, dinner! Right now we're in the butler's pantry. So over here is a food warmer, and what they would do to make the food warm, they would put the stove out in the sun right there, get it all warmed up, put it in there, add some water, and then close the lid, and then bam, you get warm food. Here is an old-fashioned stove, which looks really ornate. Later on, the family updated some things to make them more modern, like this convection oven and the sink area. And this is a refrigerator from 1931. This is the library. Over there you can see all the books. This is the music room. That music box was purchased for $70. Don't you wish you could travel back in time and just pay for everything? <laughs> That's so cheap. This is the withdrawing room, which I believe is another word for living room. And you can see that the furnitures here were super small because people back in the day were smaller. Here just is like this. Mr. This is Henry. This is Mrs. Overholster, and that's their only child. And look at how short they are. I'm taller than this little girl. Now we're going upstairs. We're not quite on the upper floor yet, but there's this resting area. In case people got tired while climbing the stairs and wanted to sit down before finishing their stair climb. All right, now let's finish our stair climb. In every room, there's a plaque that tells you information. So this one says that in 1904, when you were midway up the staircase, there would be musicians playing. So I guess that's what it was for. This bedroom was used for guests. This bed used to be Mrs. Overholzer's bed before she married Henry. 
This was Mr. Overholster's room for 14 years. This is the master bedroom. And look at how small the beds are. That's like my size. No, no, no. But the thing is that it's not one big bed. It's, it's two, two twin-sized beds. And I'm guessing this is Mrs. Overholzer's uh, sewing room. Look, it's Kalmuk's friend. Creepy dog. When this house was built in 1903, it already had electricity and plumbing, which was advanced for its time. Oh, is this the sunroom? This is the sunroom. And that is the Henry Overholster Mansion. My favorite part is seeing how small all the things were back in the place. I also like the grand staircase up. I like how pretty much everything in the mansion was original because some of these historical homes that we go to have so many replicas that's not really that original. But this one, it has everything that the family living here would have had. On to our next stop. Our next stop is the First Americans Museum. A family discovery center is coming soon, which is when you step into a giant pop-up book. And this is one page of the pop-up book. In this cool theater, it shows many Native American origin stories. opening of the First Americans Museum 2021. So before the Europeans came, this is there were 18 million people. Do you know why 95% died by 1800? Because of the war and the diseases? Yeah, mostly the diseases. The diseases killed so many people. So smart. Whoa. Oh, these are all of the tribes, right? Oh look, see how this one is spelled with a an exponent N. I looked up where Oklahoma got its name from. Oklahoma is a Choctaw Indian word that means red people. So people is Okla and red is Hama. This map shows the boundaries of each Native American tribe. Fry Bread and Spam by Dr. Sue. <laughs> by Dr. Sue. Not Seuss, but Sue. This section is on misrepresentation, which is negative stereotypes and the use of their images. Some of the stereotypes are cigar store Indian, drunk Indian, savage, etc. Let's chunk. There. Roll, roll, roll. Let's go. Oh, throw. Run, 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 run. What am I supposed to do? Okay. Throw. Run, 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 run. <laughs> The computer is too fast. It's the worst. No, no, I'm drawing. <laughs> and that is the First Americans Museum. My favorite part of this museum is chunky. <laughs> because I was very funny. This is a great place to learn about the local Native Americans in Oklahoma. This game was fun until I lost twice in a row, when I won all the races. Just because apparently I, I didn't hit my stick with the stone or something, but like I beat the computer in the running, and then it gave me zero points and the computer got four. I love this game. Now we're gonna walk along the canal at Bricktown. The canal here kind of reminds me of the one in San Antonio. There's even a boat going along. If we had more time, we would probably ride it. We're back at the Ellison Hotel. We got a slice of pie from the Pie Junkie, and this mocha is from the Milo restaurant, which is in the hotel. 
So we thought that the mocha would pair well with the pie. Mmm, chocolatey. This hotel lobby is really nice to just sit and relax. Brother's also eating his pie here. Stay tuned for part two.